find f of x such that f prime of x is equal to 2x. OK, well, I think we can even remember this. So I don't think we even need to do any maths. We just remember that if we had x squared, let's say f of x equals x squared, then we know that f prime of x was equal to 2x. We just remember that, don't we? So we simply say that the answer is f of x equals x squared. Simple. So what have we actually done? Well, if we have any polynomial in the form of f of x is equal to ax to the power n, we multiply by the index, which gives us a n x to the power n, and then we reduce the index by 1, so we get a n x to the power n minus 1. And that's our derivative. So when we go backwards, we have our a x to the power n, so we increase the index by 1, so we get a times x to the power n plus 1, and then we divide by the new index, and that is wrong. Let me just correct that for you. Glad I spotted that. Okay. So that should be a over n plus 1. x to the power n plus 1. And that gets us back to our f of x. Let's just try that. Let's um, take the derivative of a over n plus 1 x to the power n plus 1. OK, so we're multiplying by n plus 1. So that's n plus 1 times a. divided by n plus 1, and then that's x to the power n plus 1. Sorry, we're trying to get the derivative, sorry. Uh, so that's to the power n, because or rather n plus 1 minus 1. So we multiply, we're multiplying by this, and then we're taking 1 away, and that gets us our derivative. So if we simplify this, that cancels with that, and these two cancel, and so we're left with ax to the power n. which is what we have up here. OK, and round and round we can go. Right, so for any derivative, for any derivative ax to the power n, I'll put this, Then, let me get rid of this, then f of x is equal to a over n plus 1 x to the power n plus 1. OK, so with our 2x, all we do is say this is 2x to the power 1. So then we had to add 1, which makes it a 2.
and then we divide by the new index and 2 over 2 cancels out and that gives us our x squared. So our answer is f of x is equal to x squared. But the question is, is that the only answer? For example, what would happen if f of x is equal to x squared plus 1? What would be the derivative? Well, f prime of x... The derivative of x squared is just 2x. And then the constant, well, the derivative of a constant is always 0. So that would just disappear. So we would just have f of x equals, f prime of x is equal to 2x, which is exactly the same. So the answer might be x squared plus 1. In fact, it could also be x squared plus 2, or x squared plus 3, or any other constant. So the complete set of solutions to this question is f of x is equal to x squared plus a constant. Okay. Now I won't bother with the stuff on the right. Right, so what we have here is called the indefinite integral. I'm just going to write that down so we can remember. It's called the indefinite integral. And a way we can express this um, symbolically is we can say the integral, and that's basically an elongated S shape. You might have seen this before. The integral of f prime of x with respect to x we have to remember to say with respect to x is equal to f of x plus a constant we have to always remember that there's a constant when we take the derivative we lose the constant so information has been lost uh, so we have to use this plus c to show that there are an infinite number of functions that could have the same derivative. OK, I think that's probably about it. Um, let's just try a couple of worked examples, uh, just to be familiar and comfortable with it. And then I'll leave you with a question. Uh, let's say, um, what is the integral of... Uh, 2x to the power 4 plus 6x cubed minus 2x squared plus 7. There we go. So we're looking for the integral of that with respect to x. Okay, so that would be and the reason I put such a long thing is to give us experience in finding the integral. So just like with the derivative, we can take each term separately. So 2x to the power 4, so our algorithm is that we add 1 to the index and then we divide by the new index. So that's going to be... So we've got our 2x... So the 4 becomes a 5, and then we divide by 5. And now we can add to that. We've got our 6x, and the cubed then becomes to the power of 4, and we divide by 4. And then we add. No, we don't add. We're subtracting this time. So we've got 2x, and the 2 becomes a 3, and then we have to divide by 3. 
and then we add 7. Now, this 7, we can think of that as 7x to the power 0, and so the 0 then becomes a 1, and then we divide by 1. Well, dividing by 1 doesn't change anything, and x to the power 1 is just x. And then we have to remember to add a constant. And that is our solution. OK, I hope that was helpful. I'll leave you with a question, and I'll see you in the next video.